Hey everybody, Cordon here for another episode of Winning the Weekly. Today's weekly is Frozen to the Bone on August 10th, 2023. We've almost been through a year of uh, weeklies, I think. I'm not sure when I started doing this, but... Yeah, we are almost through a year of the game being released. So let's go on and show you the best setup that I think is out there for getting the to floor three. It's probably not the best setup, but what I prefer to use. So before we go in, let us go to see what the corruptors are, the modifiers. Crossfire, burn deals, cold damage, and reduces fire and cold resistance by three percent per charge or point three percent per charge. This is pretty good. I don't think we have enough to combo with it though, with since we're not getting like any flame strikes in the draft. Intense cold chill reduces speed by one per charge for four charges instead of five charges. Very good for you, also very good for the enemy, so speed's gonna be like wild this week, especially depending on if you take corruptors or not. And there's a lot of cold hand corruptors today, so yeah, careful that. Prosperity, golden shards increased by 50%, that's amazing. Slow monsters is monster speed minus one, double injuries, don't die or get fail any events, that'd be bad. And more champions appear on the map, which means more loot. Alright, so let's click this, get the different music rolling, get my face out of here and pop up the cards as always in the link below there will be the card list for you to look at they're also i post them in the discord every week for the ato discord and the other thing to mention is the top cards are before reroll bottom cards are after reroll so this week i went for glacier for the innate ray of frost is very good early damage uh, recommending also random for this Vampire Tutor and Darkness Falls. Very good. You're only losing 8 HP for this, even though Evelyn's your frontline. 8 HP can be healed off pretty easily. And you can get a 4 cost spell or more for just the cost of 1. And then typically, I would probably recommend Enchanter, because this invisibility can just save a hero by making them untargetable by uh, single target attacks, or just dispel Mark, which can be pretty bad. I know on the first boss there is a uh, guy that marks the back line. So you can dispel the four mark there and then uh, Maluka is not going to be taking uh, about 20 extra damage from mark because of the uh, boss's AoE multi-hit attacks. And then if you don't feel like using invisibility and the mana shield and transmission for survivability uh, Shadow Mancer here for the Darkness Falls is really, really good, especially since you're going to be doing a lot of dark damage with uh, two other dark members on the team. Alright, Grookly here. It may look weird to go Blunt Grookly, but there is a Destroyer's Gauntlet after you beat the first boss, so I do recommend going a Blunt build, especially this Wrecking Ball is good just to dump energy and AoE everything. Uh, bluffs as much as possible, and then I have the Change Weapon. But if you weren't going a blunt build, there is a very good uh, mortal strike here that does 53 damage for 4 energy. And also inflects decay and vulnerability, which is pretty dang nice. Alright, on to Zek. Zek, I'd probably run curses this week and go curse Mancy into the cursed rats. You get a... There's a lot of cursed daggers this week, so you can consider just like all the cursed rats going out there and biting things. I chose random for the shackle, dark, or the dark on all monsters, and uh, pretty good damage for three energy to hit everything. Blizzard, you probably won't be using much. This corrupted dark ritual is amazing for setting the other team up. You can also go corrupted for punishment. It's pretty good. This uh, darkness falls down here is actually not bad, but. I felt like getting this cold snap is, which is what I did for my run today. Uh, it's a trap because it always led me into dead draws, so consider not getting this. Alright, and then Maluka, we have a mix of things. I mostly chose AoE heals with Spark of Life, Circle of Healing, and then we actually have some AoE Darkness to help out with uh, popping some dark with the Unholy Storm and Dark Outbreak. For my run, I actually did this Divine Power. It worked okay, but I think uh, the Circle of Healing and 
stuff is going to treat you better. This greater heal is also very interesting because every overcharge you put into it, you're adding another bless and adding another inspire. So for five energy, you could be giving somebody two extra draw and three extra damage and healing them to full. So consider this if you if you think you just need a big heal on Evelyn or want to do that line of buffing. All right, and then let's go do a sample draft here and show you what perks I usually pick. So we'll get that out of there. I'll bring my face back and then see what I did here. Yeah, so it's Glacier, random, and then Enchanter after the reroll. And then we're taking the invisibility. So I'll almost always get speed, HP for survivability. And then you can do dark and chill or fire or whatever you want. Probably doing chill here. Probably don't need dark, you can go extra resistances if you want to. Rookly is going to be very much blunt, so we want the destroyer from that one. And then reroll for brawler and random. And this overpower is actually not that bad either, because that's 10 extra damage for every energy. But we'll be taking the bludgeon, take the, that speed, HP. And I think we're going to go vulnerability. It's a tough choice. There's a couple vulnerable cards, but you can also just go blunt damage too. Or if you don't worry about HP, you can just go uh, fury and... There's a lot of stuff you can do with Grookly, but probably the safest bet is HP and then... Vulnerable. Kind of want to be careful a little bit on Fury because the last boss can't steal it at the end. So, Alright, we are taking this random pack with Zek. And then re-rolling for the curse. I forget what... Uh, if, yeah, I had Witch and Enchanter. So, Witch, Enchanter. And then we're taking that Shadow Binding because it's cool. We like cool things. Now there is a Dark Flame Ring, you could consider this, but I'm going to go for the Chill. And then you could also go for Dark Damage as well, wouldn't be too bad. And then for Maluka, we are going Heretic Briar. And then we're rolling for that Circle of Healing down here, that's really good. And since you're going, uh... All these region cards, you'll definitely want to pick up her level 2, which I'll showcase in a second. So speed, HP, Dark, Region. Uh, you could also swap out HP for Vitality or Speed for Vitality because of her level 4. But we're going to go without Vitality and hopefully uh, manage through. Alright, this is actually an interesting choice here. Mostly want HP and survivability stuff, so I'm actually going to take this. It's like 6 HP every start of every combat. Thorny Ring. Gold ring and the 10 HP here. And then as I was saying, Maluka Yang Ritual is really, really good. You can either go Healing Brew, Love Enhancer, Mojo. Oh, Zek, I'll do Curse Mancy, Preachification, Infestation, Absolute Darkness. And Grookly, I usually do Onslaught, Offensive Mastery, Dual Wield, Tireless. And with Evelyn, you can go whatever. I usually do enchant weapons and elemental amplifier because adding more chill and burn is very luxury. But versatile is amazing for actually having her in the front line. And I usually do arcane conduit and elemental weaver. And that'll be it. Thank you for watching. Hope you all have a good weekly. Let me know if you have any trouble, get stuck on any fights because I'm happy to help wherever I can. Especially uh, fights with save files that are kind of stuck. Love doing those. Alright, have a good one. Bye, brush teeth. Be well, be well, and good luck.